Except there's no food there. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mount Vernon's Trivia Thursday. That's <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today we are going to be playing a game of Washington Counts. It's going to be uh, uh, a trivia game, and we invite you all to play along with us. Now, in order to do this, uh, you're going to need to go to www.menti.com. Now, um, you can do that with uh, another window on your uh, computer, or you can do it through another device, uh, say uh, a phone or uh, a pad of some sort, you can do it that way. Now, once you get to menti.com, you're going to see the address right there on the screen. Uh, you will have to enter the code 403395, and that will allow you to play along with us today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I am your host for this afternoon. Uh, my name is Dr. James Craig, and with me are three Washington experts. Three of Mount Vernon's history hotshots have joined us here today to play in the game. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's waste no time at all, and let's meet our experts. Now, first off, ladies and gentlemen, we have... Douglas Bradburn. So, Doug, tell us a little bit about uh, what makes you uh, the best expert on Washington, and uh, then tell us maybe one of your favorite foods. Hmm? I'm Doug Bradburn, President and CEO of Georgia Washington's Mount Vernon. I'm the best expert because I live and breathe and walk in the same place where George Washington lived, right here at beautiful Mount Vernon. And you, you asked me what my favorite sandwich was. What was the what was uh, the a food? Just a food. Yes. Yeah, I like I like a good sandwich, you know. I like a really nice crispy, crusty bread and my summer sandwich with a little bit of the house dressing that you might get at the cheese shop in Williamsburg, Virginia, and a little turkey on there, a little cheddar cheese. But there's a, a really good sandwich around here at a shop called the Mount Vernon, which is similar to that, uh, which just ah. uses mayo at the, uh, what is the name of that local place? Uh, uh, Sherwood Forest. No, Robin Hood. No, Sherwood Forest. It's very good. <laughs> Sherwood Forest. Robin Hood lived in you Sherwood Forest. You see the Forest. theme. The theme is there. Yeah. It, it, interestingly, Dr. Craig, I do have a question yes. for you before you, okay. you pass yes. it off here. I, do you, I wonder if you know why the medieval era is called the Dark Ages occasionally. Why is it called the Dark Ages? Because there were so many knights. All right, let's meet our next uh, contestant, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Just to let you in, those of you who are tuning in for the first Thursday, uh, our next contestant is our winner for the past two weeks in a row. So, well, ladies well, and gentlemen, those are contested though, those are contested victories. Remember, <laughs> Doug contests <laughs> every victory that he does not win. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet Kevin Butterfield. Now, Kevin, tell us why you have been doing extremely well in the game, and also. What's your favorite food? Uh, well, so I'm the executive director of the library in Mount Vernon, the Fred W. Smith National Library for the study of George Washington. Uh, and I have you know, picked up a lot while there. Uh, but I got to tell you, I, I, I think mm -hmm. I, I am uh, 2-0 and o, uh, for reasons that have to do with uh, being a good guesser, uh, not being uh, fully knowledgeable about everything, but just being... Uh, knowledgeable enough to get close, and I think that's a big part of this game. I don't think you have to know everything to uh, to win. You just have to be closer than the other two, and uh, so, so far I've been there. Yeah, so what so you're saying is you're not smart. You're just a good guesser. No, he's just smarter than us. I'm also yeah. quite smart. But, All right, uh, just, just making sure. Just making sure. This answer. game, right? it's, uh, it's the guesser. <laughs> just and, sure. and as far as as, as favorite food goes, uh, yes. I uh, like Doug. Love a good sandwich. It's the one thing I can I can make. Uh, that my wife admits is superior to, to mm -hmm. her attempt at a sandwich. Um, but uh, my my all-time favorite food is is certainly uh, uh, chips. I, I, I love chips. I, I, I For a while there, I was all corn chips. Now <clears throat> I, I love potato chips. I, 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 I devour chips. Right now, my, my favorite would be a, a good corn tortilla chip. So you are a connoisseur of chips. I like chips. Excellent. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, now let's welcome our final judge this evening, uh, Susan Scholler. Uh, Susan, tell us why you are going to defeat these two men this evening. And also, I'm sick of hearing about food. Tell us your favorite drink. Well, you can tell us your food and then tell us what you like to drink um, with it. 
So, right. So uh, you'll see why I'm going to win. Well, it's my turn, obviously. And um, I don't understand. Actually, I've got something to contest because yeah. I don't understand why I always get introduced last. I yeah, think it's thing. really Definitely. setting things up in a bad way. And yeah. I want to say I don't like it. So, you know, it's I, just, I think, I think it's, uh, you know, it's a criticism of you, Dr. Craig. That is a criticism of you. I don't know how you feel about that. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm going off of the list I was given. <laughs> the alphabetical list. Well, throw the list up in the air and change it. Next uh, week, so, you're first. Um, foods. Uh, well, I am a uh, Midwestern girl, farm girl, and so I have to say, I think you can't beat a good steak. Uh, no. That would be politically incorrect, but, uh, you know, you can't take a girl off the farm. Um so. So, uh, and what would I have to drink with that? Uh, well, yeah. I'd start with a Manhattan and move on to red wine. Ooh, well, it's <laughs> wow. a big steak. Two-fisted, that's good. I like that. <laughs> that's excellent. That's not bad. It's sequential. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. All right. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, now that we've uh, gotten the chance to meet our experts, let's uh, review how the game is played. Now, ladies and gentlemen, a question will appear on the screen. And the answer to this uh, is always a number. Now, these will be related to George Washington in some way, but it will the answer will always be a number. Now, the experts will then um, figure out what their guess on the answer is. Now, uh, once they do that and their answers are revealed, you get to guess which expert is correct. By correct, I mean closest to the answer without going over it. All right. Now, remember, you can all play along at menti.com. Uh, it's right there scrolling across the bottom of the screen. And the code, once you get there, is 403395. Now, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's play Washington Counts. Question number one, experts. How many patents did George Washington Carver Hmm, this is a familiar ring to it. <clears throat> yes. Now, these uh, patents here, uh, I'm sure you all know who George Washington Carver is, I hope. So, uh, it, uh, oh, well, Kevin, you're the one to speak up. Uh, so, uh, uh, your home state. So, you think you have an advantage in this one because Absolutely. it is. To, <clears throat> I, I, if I could remember what they taught me in elementary school, I would be able to tell you how many patents mm -hmm. he held. Uh, we well, certainly talked about George Washington Carver uh, in well, school. Cynthia Miller says go Midwest. So That's right. She's, she's very excited about this. Yes, indeed. So what we're doing is we're now our experts are uh, writing their answers down. Once they've got that down, they'll put their ready screens up. There's Doug, there's Susan, and Kevin, of course, coming in last. There is ready. It takes a so, long time to guess better. <laughs> now, well, he's, that's why he's the champion. He knows what he's doing. So let's, uh, can we reveal now or what? All let's right, let's see what your answers are. Experts, reveal your answers. Susan says Ooh. three. Uh, Doug says 11. And Kevin says 41. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's up to you all to decide who you think is closest without going over. So uh, zero to three uh, would be Susan, uh, would be no, none. Three to 11 would be Susan. And then 11 to 41 is Doug. And 41 to infinity is Kevin. So uh, let's see how the audience is thinking we're doing here. Kevin, they're, they're going with your Midwest vibe here. They, they've got you at 42%. Susan is holding well at second with 28 Doug, you're, you're la oh, you're Doug, you popped up one to 20. You're, now you're up to 26. Yes, yes. Excellent, and six Dr. And six is still Craig. going. So uh, right. we've got quite so Kevin, why did you choose? Ones. Why did you think he's got 41? What's your thing? Well, I, I was thinking something in the 30s, but I didn't want anyone to overbid me uh, and uh, and have me have me be a bit too low. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I, you know, he invented all these things with peanuts. Uh, and there, there were a lot. And I know enough to know that there was a lot of creative work that he did. 41 does feel high, but I didn't want to be too low and have someone come in just above me. So uh, it's, it's going to be a good number, though. A good number. Interesting. A good number. Uh, well, what, uh, other than peanut butter in the peanut category, peanut brittle? 
peanut. Oh no, uh, no things like I remember he made an ink. Like uh, gasoline actually, uh, from peanut butter. He created an ink from peanuts. Uh, he he created lots of things that you wouldn't think you could pull out of a peanut. Um, <laughs> Doug, someone just said that they're going to vote for you whether you're right or not. I love it. That's because Doug. they've got taste. That's they have the key taste. thing in this game is taste. Look at that pink. I got a pink shirt and my bar is pink on this one. That's a good sign. And Adam Carmen is going with you, uh, Kevin, because he thinks the number just jumped into his head. And he Maybe thinks I'm right. Maybe I remember correct. from elementary school. Who's, who knows? Susan, why so? Oh, right, what, what do you have against George Washington Carver? I mean, three? <laughs> Come on. Right. I think smaller, I have three patents. Smaller is better. They were, they were really good patents, not just everything all Jeez. over the place. Yeah, going right. for quality, not quantity on the path. Edison had way too many. Yeah, you're right. Exactly. Well, let's find out exactly how many patents he had. Oh, oh. it's three. <laughs> right on the money. Susan oh, right. gets it right quality. on the nose. Oh, so, ladies and gentlemen, Susan. those of you who thought that I it was lucky, 41 or three. more. Kevin, I think the Midwest has just been disappointed in you and your, well, your number I, he, of Well, he was an exceptional man, but apparently he didn't go fill out the paperwork terribly often. Oh, is that yeah. – now, he did write a book. A bell. Oh, Dr. Craig, you have to ring a bell or something if you know that somebody's got it exactly. You know, like, ding, 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 ding. So oh, there it is. I just did. You know, Thank it's you. Outstanding. Doug, you are new bell, all right? So when someone gets it right, you get the bing bing for me, all right? Bing, 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 bing. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, actually, George Washington Carver's uh, patents were uh, on cosmetics and paints and stains. Now, um, he did have a book on 105 uses of the peanut, though. So what he's known for. <laughs> right. So some of these he didn't patent because he just wanted to give them to mankind. Interesting. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he, he he saved them. They're just that, that, that's that Midwestern world. spirit. You know, all, hey. this, all this food talk brings me to mind of a question about uh, Thomas Jefferson. What was his favorite dessert? What was Thomas Jefferson's favorite dessert? Yes, <sighs> it was Monticello. Wow. Well, oh, ladies and gentlemen, look at this. It's yeah. an audience poll time. Yes. Uh, we'd like to learn, know a little bit more about you. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you can uh, type in your state abbreviation, use the two-letter abbreviation uh, on minty.com, type that in, and let's see where everyone is coming to us from. Uh, oh, my goodness, we've got Georgia, Maryland, Virginia, California, uh, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and they're moving around. <laughs> Susan for president, 2020. Yes. <laughs> Florida. In Florida. Yeah. So they want you president of Florida. So there. Uh, uh, can I go back to the uh, Monticello? Because, yes. You know, yes. In the Midwest, Jello is considered a major food group. Uh, yeah. Jello is a major food group? Mm-hmm. It oh served, my goodness! My childhood served at every meal. Well, yeah, I ate a, a lot of jello growing up. All right, next question: uh, The Avengers <laughs> in Infinity War features a battle scene at Washington Square Park in New York City. How much did the film gross worldwide? Infinity How much did War. It make? Uh, in the Avengers: Infinity War. Infinity Are you familiar War. with it, Doug? Which one is the one that's Infinity War? Was that the one at the end, or was it no? Because that was Endgame. So was the Endgame? Correct. Infinity War was before Endgame. Yes, <laughs> it was the one right before. Okay, so it's the Why big am one. I right smarter before. than Doug on this? I don't know. Worldwide <laughs> film gross. Okay. Yes. Worldwide <laughs> film gross. So okay. how much money did it make worldwide? Not just in this country, but all the way around the world. Now. Uh, oh, Susan is ready quick. Susan is a big fan of the Avengers. We know that. Uh, and Doug is now ready. And Kevin is, uh, I thought you were writing a dissertation. So there. All right. So they are all three ready. So let's reveal their answers and find out what they're thinking. All right. Uh, that is Susan. <laughs> Susan says 35 million. million. Doug says 1.11 1. Bill, billion. Yeah, and right. Uh, Kevin says 501 million. Ooh, so, tricky. my goodness. Well, ladies and gentlemen, now it's up to you to figure out how much money they the Avengers made 
and who got it closest. So now, um, Susan, yes. uh, you had the, the the lowest number. Why are, why are you thinking that it, it made uh, 35 million? Well, because in case they go too high, it's all mine. Oh, so you're you're playing the playing the the safe game there. The ads. Yes. Ah. All right. Then Doug, you went highest with one point eleven billion. So, uh, what is your reasoning on that? Well, I know it made over uh, nine hundred million. I thought for sure. So I figured a billion, and then I thought, well, I want to be just above Kevin or Susan. I pick <laughs> one billion dollars. So I thought one point one billion, and then I thought. But what if somebody else is 1.1 1. 1. 1. 1 billion? So then I went 1.11 1. 1 billion. So that's the uh, that's the extent of my my logic. That's there. The devious brain work of Douglas yeah. Bradford. So I probably yes. went too high, given that Kevin's only at 500 million. I could have done 501. But he, oh, he did 501. I did 501. Yeah, he could have done 502. So I would have done 501. Is what I would have done. Doug, the audience is thinking that you are the yes, closest without going over at $1.11 billion. Very tricky. Very tricky. Oh, my goodness. Eh, well, I hope it's high. Uh, let's uh, find out who is correct. Ooh, oh, billion. two billion. Victory. Oh, goodness gracious. Now, now it is... A, <laughs> You don't get a bing, bing, bell on that one. Oh, no, but he, he's striking his pose. There he is. Oh, my goodness. Now, it's only the fourth film to make $2 billion. Uh, the first was Avatar. Then we have Titanic and Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens. And Ooh. then, of course, Star Wars Infinity Wars. Well, so You mean Avengers Infinity War? Uh, yeah, Avengers. Well, one of those, you know. So now we've got a tie game. It's Doug oh and Susan at one point. Yeah. And Kevin, oh. our former champion, is holding steady in second place at zero. So he's, he's tied with none. So, uh, now, Dr. Craig, since I won yeah. this one, uh, before we go to the next question, I, I got a question for you. You were a good friend of George Washington. You knew him his whole life. But why yeah. was it well, that not his he whole life. Why, why, why was it that he had trouble sleeping? Why did he have trouble sleeping? Oh my. And why does the general have trouble sleeping? Because he couldn't lie. Yeah, that's good. All right. All right. Oh, let's go to the next question. Mm. Now, experts, how long is the George Washington Bridge in Feet. In oh, feet. Oh, oh. Feet. Woo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, nah, you threw me for a loop there. Yes. Well, it's not a looping bridge. It's just a, a straight across bridge. <laughs> feet. Huh? Yes. Feet. feet. I think that by, by saying that it was just a straight across bridge, it's helped Kevin. He's Oop. now jumped on with his pin. In feet. Mm. Matt Briney says Chris Christie knows how long the bridge is. So <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Oh, Kevin's ready, and he's holding that ready sign steady. Susan's ready too. We're all Susan ready. and Doug are now all three of them are ready. So contestants, let's reveal your answers. How long is the George Washington Bridge in feet? Let's see what you say here. Susan says um, 4,502. Yes. Doug says 3,001. And Kevin says 3333. 3,333. Now, Kevin, 3,333, it's a bit of a strange number there. Why did you choose that one? Well, I, um, I just for, um, I knew, I'm thinking under a mile, um, and I'm thinking uh, that it's going to be in that ballpark. I think Doug was as well, and that was just a, a, a way to write a number quickly. Um, mm -hmm. And I went 3,333 3, 3, feet. Mm -hmm. and, and Doug, I assume that you went 3,001 because you were afraid someone would do 3,000. No, I I did three thousand and one because I think it's exact. I think it's exactly <laughs> you are exactly that's correct. what I was going for. So I hope yeah. that I hope that when you say someone is exactly right, I hope to make my bell sound soon. So oh well, Susan, let, 
Let's see if our uh, what our audience is thinking now. Can you ask me why I guessed? I'm waiting to see how many we've got here. Then while the numbers are here, come the numbers now, Susan. Tell us why you guessed four thousand two hundred. What was it? Four thousand. What was your number, Susan? Four thousand five hundred and two. Four thousand five hundred and two. Why did why did you guess that, Susan? Or well, why do you we, know that? We know from previous experience that I go long on bridges. You know, I mean, I was so accurate with the um, with the Golden Gate Bridge, but I thought mm. in this case I would tone it down just a little bit. Mm. You toned it down just but, a little but, bit. But, to, but to but not that's be how long it feels to me when I drive across it. Yeah. Oh, so she's going from experience that she's she's driven across it several times, and and oh, she knows yes. how how long that bridge feels. It's about half of the distance from Washington to Maine <laughs> on the bridge. <laughs> well, Susan, uh, the audience is thinking that you are correct with your with your uh, distance to Maine here at 41% uh, of the of the votes are coming in for you right now, Susan. They're, 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 they're behind you all the way today, it seems. So we've... Uh, Looks like the voting is up. So let's reveal the correct answer as to how long the Washington oh, Bridge wow. 4,760, off by less than 300 feet. Wow. Susan, well feet. done. <laughs> that was the part I closed my eyes for. <laughs> nice work. Very nice. Yep. She knows, she knows, she knows her driving distances, that's for sure. Well, apparently wow. she knows her bridges also. So, so now I, I have a counting joke. Yes. Okay. okay. So what do you have if you have one pinion in one hand and two pinions in the other? I, I, I don't know. What do you have when you've got one pinion in one hand and one pinion in the other? No, two in the other. And two you in the have, other. You have a difference of opinion. Uh, yes, I love All it. Right. That will be Very put good. into the Doug Bradburn book of jokes. Yes, <laughs> well, maybe we could do a whole Mount Vernon book. <laughs> I think we should stick with the Doug Bradburn joke a book. <laughs> so, oh, do you want that to be attributed to Mount Vernon? That's right, I know him best. Thank you, Scarlet. Hey, Scarlet, I've got a, a joke for Scarlet here because I know that Scarlet is a huge fan of, of some particular person. So let me do that one. Who is the biggest jokester uh, in George Washington's army? Who is the biggest jokester in George Washington's army? Well. Yeah. I don't know who is the biggest jokester in George Washington's army. It was Lafayette. Can, can we have a, I've got a growth <laughs> All right, it's time for an audience poll again. Now you're going to uh, rate your answer on the next slide. So uh, here we go. Does George Washington uh, does George Washington's favorite breakfast of hoe cakes and honey sound tasty to you? So, oh, well, apparently it, it's going strongly agree for the, the majority. And it's uh, people, it's yeah, people have very opinion. vigorous opinions here. They either strongly disagree or they strongly agree. Well, they're strongly agreeing right now at 3.8. So uh, four, now it's four. Everybody's got a strong opinion of four on that one, that they do like the sweet honey on the um, cornmeal, uh, cornmeal cakes. So... Uh, what about you, Dr. Craig? Did you ever eat breakfast with George Washington when you were alive? Well, well, several times, several times. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. And he does like uh, butter and honey all over his hoe cakes. And it's, uh, well, he likes it because they're, they're softer too. And, you know, with the uh, uh, teeth problem, he's uh, much happier that way. Softer foods always make him happy. Hmm? <laughs> so now, uh, Kevin, were you happy with the chips there doing that? Mm. So. All right. Oh, question yeah. number four. Well, yeah, yes. uh, this is uh, this is a, a scary question. I, I was all I was all ready to answer the question. How tall was the Washington <laughs> Monument? But I because I know that number, but I don't know this one. All right. How tall is the original Washington Monument that is located in the Mount Vernon neighborhood in Baltimore? Hmm? Susan, you've been there many times, right? You've been to the I, Mount Vernon. I have been there. Yeah. I've been there once or maybe twice. I gave a talk at there's a wonderful club there, a women's club yep. called the Mount Vernon Club. Mount Vernon Club, which Mrs. Barbara Lucas was a member there, and they had that 
beautiful ceiling that had melted in the fire, the Tiffany ceiling that they reconstructed, this beautiful glass ceiling. I was going to say a melted ceiling does not sound attractive, but now that they, you said that they redid it, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, it melted in a fire. It was a gorgeous work of art. Look up on the Google, somebody. See the, the ceiling inside the Mount Vernon Club in Balt Mount Vernon, Baltimore. And meanwhile, <laughs> when you're at it, send me the, the, the height of the Washington Monument in Mount Vernon. Yeah, I hear that. <laughs> Wait, uh, are we looking yeah. for feet here? Are we looking yes, for feet? In, in feet, feet. Feet, inch, feet and inches. Feet and inches. My goodness. Yes, very exactly. Um, Is it symbolic? It's a number. Mm. Well, so all numbers, the, I guess numbers are symbols. So. Well, this is, I, Kevin, I, I've never Kevin seen that. Yet. I don't know what it looks like. I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> it has George Washington on top of it. I've seen it, and I still don't know uh, what it what it is. So <laughs> they are not confident right now, but they're all ready with their numbers. So yeah. let's see their uh, their numbers and see who can get closer. Susan says 149. Uh, Doug oh, said <laughs> 90 feet and five inches. Yes. <laughs> and, 90 yeah. And right. 90 feet. Oh well, I got no room to to be right here. Well, right. you got you got at least two inches. <laughs> let's, see, let's see who uh, who the audience is thinking is the closest here. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, let's review those answers again, if we could. Uh, Susan said uh, one hundred and forty nine. Doug said ninety uh, and five inches, and Kevin said eighty eight. So, uh, zero to eighty eight is no one. Eighty eight. To ninety point five <laughs> is Kevin, and then uh, ninety point five to one forty nine is Doug, and one forty nine and over is Susan. So, audience, uh, those of you watching, oh, oh Susan got oh, to a yes. big lead, but then Doug ooh, just knocked ooh. him. It's a battle between Doug and Susan on this one. I tell you, it's it's so neck and neck right there. And Kevin is just looking up yeah. from below. It's just terrible. Right. Right. Well, that's what I've you do. You thing. go to the monument. Idea. You look up from below. Yeah. Let's hope that, you know, you're up on the high pedestal right now. So they're looking up at you. You've got 42%. Uh, Doug has 33 and Kevin has 22 at this moment. Well, oh, that's, that's just, just kindness. Out. So no. the, the Washington yeah, Monument yeah, itself, yeah. by the way, the actual Washington Monument, is it, do people know this number? Tell us, Kevin. You're a Mason. 555 feet. Yeah. 555 feet. That's good. Because maybe it'll be a question next week, and you've given the answer to everyone. Well, so. then, then we'll all get Thank it right. You, Kevin. And then when we get it right, I'll be able to make my dinging sound. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like the dinging. Uh, and the answer is, come on. What kind of a stupid, stupid height is that? So, <laughs> once again, that takes the point. <laughs> uh, that's surprising to me. I mean, I you know I was trying to remember from my memory, and it just didn't seem that high. That's, yeah, it's, it's pretty high. I wow, mean, Susan. we went up on we went up on top of it when it was under renovation. So yeah, yeah. Susan it's is very uh, high. Susan's very taken nice. out a big lead at three. Uh, Doug has one, and Kevin has nothing. And uh, let's see if there can be anything done to correct this. Now, Why uh, would we want to? Here we go. How many Tony Awards has the musical Hamilton won? Now, I know uh, Mount Vernon uh, has had uh, uh, a relationship with the, the creator of Hamilton. Uh, so uh, I would hope that this would be a special place, and you might even... Uh, know a little bit about this. So, Doug, um, what are you thinking on the number of Tony Awards that Hamilton has won? Do you want me to give my answer now, or you want me to say it? Are you, are you thinking? I mean, they, I mean, they had a clean sweep at the Tonys. They crushed everybody when they came out. You do know, of course, the first award that was given to them was Don't the George Washington Prize. Yeah, the first prize. Thank you. And what we was the knew. First? 
we knew when we gave that award that it was going to crush at the Tonys and we wanted to be the first in the box. But it took us so long to get our act together, to get the money together, get our partners to agree, uh, to agree that when we finally announced that they had won the George Washington Prize, they, uh, Lynn Manuel Miranda had won the um, MacArthur Genius Grant the week before we announced it. So, you know, just a little bit of the uh, excitement away from our prize, sadly. I don't think it took anything away from us. I think we're great at it, and I think it was a, a, a fantastic award for them, and I'm sure uh, Mr. Miranda is quite happy with it. So, <laughs> All right. Has everybody got their numbers up? Is everybody ready with theirs? Uh, uh, excellent. Ready, ready. Doug, did you write your numbers? Yes. All right. Let's see how many awards that our experts believe that Hamilton won at the Tony Awards. So here we are with their numbers. Susan says nine. Kevin says one. Doug says. Oh, come on, eight. Doug. So well, I didn't know you were going to do nine. I thought you were more like a four person. <laughs> <laughs> three is my lucky number, and nine is three times three. Kevin is clearly doing a Price is Right situation here, which is a cowardly, cowardly thing. I, I, I've got to, I've got to get on the board. I, I figured it was my best shot to get on the board. <laughs> I think they won. I, I actually think they won twelve. So if I'm right with twelve, you gotta let me do my sound too. But I'm trying. To <laughs> no, that's not exact. You no, understand what you're thinking? Twelve. <laughs> Well, because I was trying to block Susan, who I knew was going to go with nine or something. Oh, well, yeah. now he's oh, good job. <laughs> oh, oh but, goodness. but, yes, even sir. if I don't get the number right, I'm the only one in this game who got to give uh, George Washington from Hamilton a, tr a tour of the mansion. Oh, uh, Chris Jackson from Chris from Jackson, the indeed. Wonderful. Spent several right. hours together one night in the mansion. And remember, for those of you playing at home, that you can go and watch and play B. Washington on the Mount Vernon webpage where Chris Jackson is the host of the uh, B. Washington game that we created. Yes, I wasn't asked to be the host of that game. So. Yeah, <laughs> there's a good reason for that. But uh, Chris Jackson was pretty good. I thought he, would, he did quite well myself, actually. He won, he, so we won an award for that, and I'll bring this over. Yeah, bring the award over, Doug. The, yeah. While Doug is getting the award, we're looking at the audience's uh, opinions here, and uh, Doug is uh, well, got a lot of percent here. So this is a Thea award, and uh, Chris Jackson got won one of these. This is a Thea award for the uh, Outstanding Achievement in Themed Entertainment Association for B. Washington, uh, and I got one, and uh, Chris Jackson, and, and the whole Mount Vernon team got one. And I sent this to him, and he sent me a very nice thank you note, Susan. And he mentioned how much he enjoyed his tour of Mount Vernon when he was ah, there. So it was an excellent tour, it. and it got me an invitation backstage at Hamilton, which was pretty cool. And oh, lucky. Oh, my goodness. What's your favorite song on the musical, Susan? Oh, I think the opening one. Mm -hmm. yep. That's good, because then you could just leave right after that one. It's all downhill then after that. To look well, when, to. when they when they called through the marketing department when they were still making Hamilton and they asked about a tour and they said, um, you know, we have this group in New York that's making a hip hop musical based on the life of Alexander Hamilton. And I had done my senior college history essay on Alexander Hamilton. So I knew a little bit about him even then. Yeah. And I was like, say what? <laughs> and then they played a clip of that opening song, and I was hooked. Yeah. No. Now you know the uh, the song, the King George song in the musical. Oh, that's uh, a You'll great be back. Lin Manuel Miranda says that he wrote that on his honeymoon. Hmm. I just, you'll be back. Oh, all right. Okay, oh, no, I got wrong. And it was in the middle 11. Oh, wrong, wrong. <laughs> ding, ding, <laughs> Kevin, if you were wise, this is when you slip another line on your answer and put it up and say, I guess. <laughs> put it up again. That's right. Okay. <laughs> that only works for you, Doug. Yeah. You, know what it, you know what it makes me think of, though, is, you know, wh why were the first American, um, British Americans, why were they like ants? Why are the first British Americans like ants? Yeah. Uh, why in the world would they be because like they ants? They lived in colonies. Hey, all right. Oh. Ding, 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 ding. All right, let's do it. Question number six. 
George Washington visited a natural spring in Bath, uh, which is now called Berkeley Springs, West Virginia. What is the temperature of the water there? In uh, Fahrenheit or centigrees? It centigrees? will be in Fahrenheit. Celsius or Fahrenheit, centigrees. Fahrenheit. Not I just Kelvin invented a new Fahrenheit. unit of measurement, centigree. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough one. Natural spring in Bath. Now Berkeley Springs. What is that temperature? Now, has anyone, have, have any of our experts ever been to Berkeley Springs before? Never. Sadly, no, no but I think we should do a field trip. Uh, field trip to Berkeley Springs. And do you know what we have in the collection re related to the Washington's trip there? What's that? We have Martha Washington's bathing costume. You have what is really? the bathing costume. That's right. What does that look like? Uh, Martha Washington robe, right? It's like it's a big kind of like a curtain, actually. It's made of blue and white checked fabric, and it's like a long nightgown, really. Mm. And it is it has curtain weights at the bottom so that when you walk right. into the bath, it doesn't Right. It didn't float up in an immodest fashion. Parking back to the Hamilton. Are we ready, Kevin? What are you doing? Kevin, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. All right. Now let's reveal their answers. And Kevin says 111 degrees. Doug says, well, Susan says 102. And Doug says 81 degrees. Now, ladies and gentlemen, now remember, it's is you have to decide who is closest without going over. So, oh, Susan, they're saying it jumped up right there with a hundred and yeah, somebody's always voting Susan because <laughs> none actually is doing quite well. He's tied with Kevin. Uh, Why so, is none? Uh, well, because uh, it has zero to eighty degrees without going over. So. Yeah. And uh, Doug has now come up at 26. Susan is still, everyone is quite caught. Like Susan, two degrees. 51% believe Susan has the correct answer or at least is closest without going over. Seems warm. Seems, Seems warm. warm. Seems warm. Seems warm. Mm -hmm. oh, well. well, it has to be over body temperature to feel warm, doesn't it? No. Why would it have to be over body temperature to feel warm? It's, it's going to feel like you if it's just the same. <laughs> I don't know. Doesn't your skin, isn't your skin more sensitive than uh, your like guts? Maybe yours is. <laughs> well, before this breaks into any more of an honor. <laughs> well, look, the boiling point of water is 212 degrees Fahrenheit, if I recall. So it's clearly not boiling. So you're probably right. It's probably over 100. Uh, what do you know? All right. The answer is oh, 474. Oh, there you go. No. Dang. Boy. I take it back. I'm right. You guys are. Oh, no, I'm over. <laughs> Pardon me. Now, I'm going to say, Doug, you could have turned you know, the card over and said you were. I have to say, the first number that came into my mind was 72, but I said, no, I thought, no, they're just going <laughs> to laugh at me if I say that. So I didn't. <laughs> now, I you can actually, actually, in Berkeley Springs, you can still drink the water freely there. You can take uh, your jugs and fill them from a public tap uh, free of charge and all that. It's a, a law that was established in 1776. Love it. Yes. So All right. remember that in case that's a question next week. Yeah. Well, right. here's a question for you. Where was the Declaration of Independence signed? At the bottom. Where? Hey, Susan, you got it. That's good. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> 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 All right. Let's let our... Let's let our audience have a, have a little bit of fun here. It's time to guess the object. So when we show the next slide, uh, you're going to have to figure out what is on the screen. So uh, it's time to submit your guesses here. Take a look at that and, uh, and see what you think it is. <laughs> Everyone is just looking going, I have no idea what I think it is. Mm. So, uh, uh, a pounce cup sander, a watering can, Susan's pot for 
amazing plant for her amazing plants, uh, pepper shaker, shower head, flower sifter, juicer, mm, pepper shaker, bottle cap, water sprinkler, strainer, something for thread. Strainer is a popular one. Flower sifter, salt shaker, to go with the pepper shaker. We Muffin butter. Oh Lord! Hand warmer. A watering can part. Sander for letters. Strainer. A lot of interesting guesses there. All manner of ones. So it's still got a water sprinklers. Look to be the a coffee filter. Hmm. All right, that's good one. Yeah, not there. Order for finishing a letter dry. Uh, yeah, okay. All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's the answer? The answer is it is a pounce box. It is used to uh, uh, shake uh, uh, powder upon the uh, letters to uh, dry the ink sand to make sure that the ink is dried. So a lot of our audience did get that. Now, question number seven. Cherry blossom. Peak bloom date in Washington, D.C. is set when this percentage of blossoms should be open. Mm. What is that percentage? So the cherry blossom peak bloom date in Washington, D.C. is set for when this percentage of blossoms should be open. What Thank percentage you. is that? So, Kevin, have you uh, been to the uh, cherry blossoms? I have not this year. They they uh, obviously were dissuading people from traveling down there. But last year was my first uh, cherry blossom in D.C. and I got to see it last year. Excellent, Doug. Have you been there to the cherry uh, blossoms, or are you uh, just say? I've know? never been down to D.C. to look at the cherry blossoms, like amongst them in the trees. I've only driven oh. by and looked out the window. Yeah, passed by. Susan, so have yeah. you spent much time? I have been there several times, and uh, my personal favorite was actually the first time I went there since moving to Washington, and we went at twilight down to Haynes Point, which oh. is just magical to take the drive down and then back up Haynes Point. So Haynes Point. It's like a, it's there like it a fairyland. There it is, ladies and gentlemen, your recommendation, Haynes Point, comes directly from Susan. So. And it's not crowded. It's not crowded. Well, it wasn't. Now it will be. So um, <laughs> let's see everyone's answers there already. So what percentage of the blossoms should be open when it, it's peak bloom time? Uh, Kevin says 40%. Doug says 71.5%. And Susan says 61%. Mm, Doug has good, good guess, Susan. That's a good guess. So, uh, I mean, it's not as good as my guess, but it's a pretty good guess. All right. Did I the have audience, that oh, in my evaluation? I think it was going to be like three quarters is what I was thinking. And then I thought, well, i got to go below that, but then I want to go over 70, and then I want to go over 71. So 71.5, victory. All right. So, so Doug says 71.5, uh, Susan says 61, and Kevin says 40 percent. Why so, below 50, Kevin? Why did you think it was below 50? Well, I think there's a chance it might be 50 or 51, but I didn't. I didn't want to get right in the mix with you all. Mm -hmm. uh, Kevin and, thinks half the blossom. This is a tough one. You were social so, distancing from our answers. That's yeah. right. So, that's Kevin, true. you've got you've got 40 to 60 percent. Uh, that helps. Su Susan has has 61 to 71. <laughs> And Doug has 71.5 on up to infinity. And mm. everyone seems to believe Susan is the is the closest there without Wait, going not over everyone. 48% believe Susan is. That's not even <laughs> the direct majority. That's not everyone. But if you round up, that's 50. And if you round up, that's everyone. 40, 49 points of things you help. Oh, yeah. Oh, Doug said he wanted to, thought it would be over 70. So Susan gets the point. Way too tricky, Doug. You know, we got to do closest to the number in the future. No, no, no. That's not the rule. Makes no sense. We can't change the rule. So, Susan, you are now solidly in the lead. In the I can't lead. 
if you go by Price is Right rules, she is. But if you go by closest, it's much closer. Well, you go by the rules that are, not the rules that you want to be. Sometimes when you're losing, you change the rules. That's what the Americans did the American Revolution. They changed the rule book, brought in the French. Nobody said anything about the French in the beginning. <laughs> well, brought them in. Gene, Gene Walker says so close. I gotta go find a Frenchman to help me out with this game. Jeez, it's killing me. All right, question number eight. When the Washington Capitals won the Stanley Cup in 2018, the Washington uh, the, the Stanley Cup paid a visit to Mount Vernon. Mm. How much does the Stanley Cup weigh? Well, Kevin's a big hockey guy. He knows this. Are we Don't. looking for pounds, ounces, kiloliters? What are we looking for? Kilograms? Centigrams? Number of pounds. Sorry? Pounds. Pounds. Yes. So how many pounds? So now, did 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 any of you three get to see the Stanley Cup when it came by? Did you get to visit with it, pay attention to it, see it at all? Or did they sneak it in past you? Uh, no, I was uh, uh, not informed as the CEO. God knows why people would tell me that this was happening. So no, I did not get a chance to see it. I think the development team hogged it. Yeah, the development so. team did it from Doug. <laughs> Kevin, did you get to see it at all? No, never saw it. And, uh, Susan, were you there for it? No, I mean, I'm only in charge of artifacts. So I, would I was so like, hoping you would say yes. <laughs> classic, this is a classic Mount Vernon special where only the cool kids got to know about it. And let me tell you something. I've got a long memory, and I haven't forgotten that, okay? I'll have to show you my picture. So, no, I didn't get to see it. So, all right, is everyone ready with their answers? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. All right. So, uh, experts, tell us what you think the Stanley Cup weighs in pounds. Here we go. Kevin says 33 pounds. Doug, what is that number? Well, what number do you need, Dr. Craig? Because there are a lot of different numbers. But I, right now it's it's two it's twenty pounds is that number twenty pounds, so 20 pounds and and Susan says one hundred and no 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 ten pounds. 10 pounds two ounces ten pounds two ounces okay you got those ounces in there mm -hmm. all right so That's Susan says ten pounds Doug says twenty and Kevin says thirty three yeah. mm. so. Uh, your reasoning on your weight on this, uh, oh, Susan. You very it's, very it's very large. It's got to be more than ten, uh, easily more than ten. I would say it might be thirty. I mean, Kevin could be right. It's a big. They're always like ah, wrestling with it, but twenty That's sounds to be an impossible number. It's a number. So well. The audience seems to think that uh, Kevin might be onto something. They've got fifty-four percent believe that it is. It is. Once they, Kevin. Once they start googling, however, they're going to change their mind because Kevin can't. <laughs> <be right. laughs> Kevin, who's been uh, having a difficult time this game, uh, the, the, he's That's got fifty percent right, 56 right. right I'd now. I'd like so. to win one or two before we close out. <laughs> All right, so let's see what the Stanley Cup hey, is. Oh, 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 wow, very good, Kevin. Yeah. Only one and a half pounds off. Ding, 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 ding. That's pretty probably cool. a lot of sweat that's in the cup. Very place. good. So excellent. Wow. Well done. <laughs> so what did the Americans do when they uh, found out about the Stamp Act? What did the Americans do when they found out about the Stamp Act? They licked it. Oh. <laughs> and thank you, Susan. <laughs> Good. Good one. Come on. All right. Uh, question number nine. Uh, how many yards of fabric were needed for an 18th century ball gown with a train? This is a, this is a question that's suited for one of these experts and not the others because of their expertise. It's an unfair question. I want you to know. <laughs> we will take it up with the question writers. <laughs> yards are needed for an 18th century ball gown with a train. Yes. 
Okay. I don't even know what a reasonable answer is. Uh, so Kevin I, I doesn't even know what a ball gown and train is. Well, I just never made one from fabric. Uh, that's, what, what have you made them out of? You had miles and miles of skirt. Are, what are we? And so it's in the yards. Okay. Yeah. yeah. How many how many yards of fabric were needed for an 18th how century? Wide is fabric. Whoa. <laughs> Does it make some no, 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 no questions. Isn't the yard a standard width? A standard size, of course. There was no standard size in the 18th century. Oh, here we go. <laughs> now the expert's coming back to bite. Hey, now the expert is Susan is, is is playing mind games with you now, gentlemen. I believe she's. Are we talking square square yards here or straight up yards, like Susan just asked? Cloth yards. Yes. Oh, cloth yards. <laughs> so, all right. This Everybody is got their ready card up. So let's see how many yards. It's going to take to make a dress. So, how many do our experts think here? Five. Susan says eighteen, and Doug has twelve. So, now Kevin, you said five yards, and you're you're much lower than the rest of. I don't even know what a reasonable guess would be. Kevin was thinking a mini dress. That's right. That's right. In the 18th century style. And. And, and Doug, you went with twelve. Yes, uh, yes, sir. How, how did you arrive at your number? Well, twelve sounded to me like about the amount you need to make a beautiful dress with a good train on it. I mean, now if you want to go <laughs> extravagant with a super long train, maybe you could get. Well, up to well you <laughs> absolutely do. I mean, if you're going to have a train, you want a long train. Look, I thought and we were doing a standard dress and train, not extravagant dress and chain, like a Martha Washington dress and train. I mean, come on. What are we Martha, talking? You've got, you've got an overskirt. You've got a petticoat. You've got sleeves. You've got ruffles. Susan, Susan is 81%. You know, this, is, this is the problem. Well, so you asked a textile expert about a question about textiles. So when am I going to get something I know anything about? Um, oh, yeah. like you have it. Bring back the census. The census is my thing. Come on, bring that back. Besides, if I'm wrong, it's going to be really embarrassing. The answer is oh eight. god no it's good uh, <laughs> wait Come on. i had eight i had eight, <laughs> I had eight. Yeah. There's eight. There's There's eight. There it is. and gets it ding ding on the dot anyhow mine <laughs> was a better eight. dress if we did close to two it'd still be kevin unbelievable oh it's so this sticky is that. The blind dresses. yes mine was a better dress <laughs> Yours was a very extravagant dress, Susan. I wouldn't want to have you as a daughter when I was a 18th century person trying to prepare your coming out gown. <laughs> That's only one of the reasons. <laughs> we still can't catch you, Susan, but I, I can at least beat Doug if I get this last one. So. Oh, jeez. I'm liking it. So, I'm liking I'm it. For with uh, Kevin and Doug at two points each. Susan has four points. Uh, this next one's worth double, though. We have a chance okay. to come back. We'll take it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Wait, we eight, answered that one. Yards. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for you to play again. Uh, we have two truths and a lie. Uh, you have to guess what is true and what is a lie. Now, uh, when the question pops up, make your selection uh, as to uh, what is the lie. So uh, you have to guess which one is the lie. Mm. So let's see what our choices are. We have uh, George Washington. Uh, two things about him are true and one is a lie. Uh, he had red hair. He chopped down the cherry tree. He threw a silver dollar uh, uh, across, the, uh, across the Potomac River. Two truths and a lie. Well, I think it's two, two, two of these are myths. I think it's two, two myths, myths. Two yeah. myths and a truth is what it is. We, I think. we made that about as confusing as possible, as possible, couldn't we? Yes. Uh, so. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. So two of these are myths. One is not. Okay. 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 All right. So, so what are we guessing? We're guessing which one is right. I, I believe that's what we're going to have to do since two are not true. <laughs> Okay, because I thought maybe you know, one, there's no evidence about the one. I mean, I'm I'm yeah. certain that he chopped down a cherry tree at some point in his life. Okay, <laughs> so, I mean, 
you know, that I think could be the two truths, right? Because I don't but, think anybody could. But you know, we have in the collection a, a, a verified branch from the cherry tree he chopped down. Oh, we do. Authenticated in the 1950s. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Authenticated in 1950. <laughs> so, goodness gracious. So here's the thing. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we don't get to see the answer. There you go. There are many myths about George Washington, but one of these is not. Simple. So pick the one that's not a myth. Yes. All pick right. <laughs> All right. So the truth is that it's not a myth is that George Washington had red hair. He actually did. As a young man, before it went white, he had red hair. Uh, chopping down the cherry tree was made up by uh, a man by the name of Parson Weems in a book that he wrote about George Washington. And Maybe. throwing the silver dollar across the Potomac River, I have no idea where that one came from. Do our experts? Uh, it's not in Weems. It comes later. Yes. Yeah. All right. Final question. Audrey Hepburn is an EGOT winner. Her, her Emmy is for Gardens of the World with Audrey, uh, Gardens of the World with Audrey Hepburn, and features Mount Vernon. As of 2020, how many EGOT winners have there been? Now, an EGOT winner, does everyone know what an EGOT winner is? I have yeah. no idea. Yes. The EGOT winner is don't the winner them. of if They don't know, don't tell them. They gotta know. <laughs> how many yes. yards and skirt? I mean, come on. <laughs> the, an EGOT winner is the winner of an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar and a Tony. Look, if they're these are supposed to be your experts, they don't know basic stuff in the question. That's their problem. I mean, you can't, <laughs> not for that. Thank like, you, does Doug. everyone know what the word gardens means? You know, I mean, come on. Ridiculous. What does it mean? Yeah, I don't know. Plants stuck in a place together. Yeah. Trey Aslop says more like Doug Dadburn. <laughs> so, so. I like it. <laughs> All right, so, uh, so hey, Doc Dr. Craig, how do you make a tissue dance? Oh, no, I'm, I'm afraid to even ask. You put a little boogie in it. I got a groan wow. before it even came out. That's great. For the kids so out there. Bored. It's funny, <laughs> but it's not. So there you are. So, yes. Uh, is everyone ready with their answers? Doug is picking the boogie off of his I'm ready. I'm ready. Here we are. So let's see what our experts think. How many EGOT winners have there been? Kevin says five. Doug oh. says seven. And Susan says 14. Oh, so, I, don't got, I don't want to read that. You don't have to say it that mockingly. 14. How, many, how did you arrive at that number, Susan? Uh, I made it up. You made it up. <laughs> well, she, she didn't invent the number 14, just to be clear. <laughs> Oh, all right. Just making sure on that. Doug, no, you uh, I'm on, I almost wrote seven. Four. Do you know the answer to this? Because I almost wrote seven. It was bouncing around in my mind. Oh, oh. Uh, so, no, I, I mean, I think seven sounds about right. I mean, 10 sounds like a lot. It's hard to get all those. Uh, Doug, I mean, I haven't gotten any of them, for God's sake. You're I 35%. And uh, yeah. Kevin is coming up. Susan, Susan. Remember, this one is worth three points. No, it is not worth double points. No, it's worth three times. It's three points. <laughs> it's worth three times the point. So instead of one, it's worth three points. Can you imagine? No, 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 no. No, it's only, only if it's announced in advance and it what wasn't. Come on. You got be, to be willing to take a chance. The audience is really, really leaning heavily on. I know. Doug, Doug did work there. Yes. The answer is. All right. All right. You're right. kidding me. Yes. Unbelievable. Nice. Oh, you, you need a little you got face. Oh. <laughs> Susan, uh, this, you know, this is. I killed it. Five. <laughs> right, let's show that screen. It was worth so, minus four. three points. Shirley right. Purvis. Right. Right. right, this was worth three three times. Remember, Doug said. So I know. Oh, that's oh, three three unbelievable. All right, Susan is our grand winner this week wow. with five points. All Kevin right. and Doug tied at two points. This is Gentlemen. disgusting. This reminds me of a joke about uh, King George who we brought up earlier. 
You know, oh. what did King George think about the American colonists? What what did he think of the American colonists? He thought they were revolting. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Become a member. Tell him, Dr. Craig. Tell him. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to thank you all for joining us here, but you can join us uh, all the time by becoming a member at Mount Vernon. Just there's the address on the uh, on the screen, www.mountvernon.com. A member, and uh, there are all sorts of uh, membership has its privileges type of things there going on. So, ladies and gentlemen, please join us. Please become a member because, as you see, Washington's home is a beautiful place, and it is a wonderful place to come spend your time and join us very soon. We hope. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, right. thank you all for coming. Thank out. you to Becky Burton. Thanks to. Um, uh, uh, what's her name? Alex. Vice President uh, Wickens, who uh, runs the department. <laughs> Allison oh, Wickens, uh, Trey also up in the background. Thank you all for signing in. We'll see oh, you. Matt Briney. Yeah, and thank Matt you, Matt Briney. Briney. That's right. Everything Bye. goes on the screen. Everybody <laughs> slide into the studio so they can see you real quick. Bye. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, you control that. See you next week. <laughs>